Ms. Anna Hicks from Grayson College is going to speak to us about potential growth in the college. Thank you for letting me be here. Uh, Grayson College has decided to call for a bond election. That's something that we've planned for. They've been in the works for a while, for about six months. And our board discussed it and decided that that's the route that they wanted to go. We haven't called for a bond since 2007. So during that time, we worked and paid things off early, um, completely paid that bond off. During that time, we've also self-funded some different things. We built a new residence hall. Um, we've added, you know, manufacturing area and done some things like that. So the colleges worked really hard to be fiscally responsible. And so they take the weight of um, asking for permission to go for a bond um, pretty seriously. And so. We are not asking, I have a flyer that I'll pass out before I leave if that's okay, but we're not asking to increase the tax rate. We're simply asking for permission to go after that bond. Uh, the current tax rate is what it will stay at uh, because we are required to, to have voter approval to do that. We have to go and ask the public um, to vote to give us permission to seek that bond. Well, 2023 South of Summer Concert Series was a great series to have, and I'm proud to present today that 2024 is going to be even better. Um, every band that will perform this year is an original band. Josh Mar, I am running for uh, County Commissioner here at Precinct 1. We had our primary back in early March, uh, very close to getting it done at that point, but just a tad bit short, about 18 votes short. So we are in a runoff. Uh, it is confusing. Our election is, is at the end of May. I uh, know we do have elections coming up here at the beginning of May uh, with the city and the school, the school boards. I want to touch on uh, Ms. Hicks was saying about the Gresham County College. Uh, I agree with the mayor's sentiments on, on uh, voting for that uh, bond to have. It's not going to increase the taxes. Uh, I looked at my tax rate, and only out of my whole tax bill, only six percent of my taxes go to the county college, anyways. But this is going to be so beneficial here for for the city of Van Alstine because they're going to have some more additions with all the, the silicon and prairie industry we have coming up north of us. Uh, it's really they're going to really uh, start kind of honing in on that. Doing, I know. I believe I've heard TI and Global Wafers work on a bill where they get some of our high school students to uh, be able to get into these the high school college uh, continuum, the dual credit systems, be able to get to the colleges and TI kind of pay for their way through it or Global Wafers as well and they'll be able to go back to the workforce. Which, you know, that's important because it keeps our young people here local. They're not moving away, going to some big paying jobs away. They have big paying jobs here. Keeps them local, keeps more stuff going on business. Uh, what is we are in the process of trying to make sure that we can meet the summer demands. As you know, summer demands pick up significantly when people start here getting their lawns. And in the process of doing that, we realized we had a shortfall in our system and our ability to pump water. Uh, well six is where we get water from the Colin Race Municipal Alliance water line. The entire project has been planned, it's going to be funded uh, currently through impact fees. Uh, because of the evening, Mayor and Council, thank you for giving me the opportunity to bring this project to you all uh, this evening. Uh, so this uh, gymnasium, the purpose of this project, uh, obviously, like I just said, it would, it would be to make it a usable space. Uh, the, uh, the whole building includes a front lobby area and includes restrooms, uh, the main gymnasium, uh, which would uh, be striped for basketball, volleyball, and pickleball courts. Um, it does have a small stage on the on the back side, and then it currently has two uh, classrooms on either side of the uh, main gym. And renovating this facility uh, includes a number of benefits. Um, first of all, it would be improving the quality of life for the uh, residents of Austin. Uh It would also uh, provide an indoor recreation um, area for to offer activities and things like that. Um, it can also be a rentable space for the public. Um, as our community center currently, um, over there by the, between the police and the fire station, is rented out almost constantly. Uh, this could be another uh, facility uh, for something similar to that. Um, as well, it could provide a temporary home for our senior center uh, during the downtown streets uh, renovation project. Uh, we know that that uh, may be a, a, a tough task for them to, uh, to get to their facility once the streets are torn up, so this could provide a, a temporary home. 
So um, here is an overview of the project cost. So we have um, asbestos abatement, air monitoring, uh, the remodel, which would include uh, the restrooms, the front lobby area, uh, the current uh, two classrooms, uh, which one of which we would propose to turn into a kitchen, uh, which would be more of a residential style kitchen. Uh, so we're not needing grease traps and things like that, not commercialized. Uh, it would provide uh, central heat and air to the entire building, uh, a remodel of the gym floor, updating all the electrical, the plumbing. So the next section here is the uh, what I call the remodel section. The remodel section would include interior painting of the entire facility. Uh, it would include uh, updating the southwest classroom uh, into a kitchen area. And, and as you can see on the thing, it would include cabinets, countertops, garbage, garbage disposals, three compartment sinks, dishwasher, um, some uh, commercialized uh, refrigerators and freezers, um, an ice maker. So next on our agenda uh, would be to install central heat and air in the building. Uh, we did have our friends over at AirVUAC come and check out uh, the units that are currently there. So the front lobby area uh, was an add-on at some point. Um, next is the gym floor. We, we are recommending a full redo of the gym floor. Um, but the electrical, uh, we had our electricians come out. Um, they verified that all of the current electric is safe. Uh, so the, there is electric to the building. Um, but they did say a lot of the wiring would not pass code compliance today. And then uh, we have our plumbing. Uh, the, the plumbing here, again, uh, this would be to include replacement of all water lines if necessary. So once they get, uh, there's currently no water to the building. Once they get water to the building, they'll be able to test uh, what lines are functional, which ones are not. Uh, so this would include a replacement of all water lines. Uh, it would uh, include installation of water heaters, uh, installation of, of new restroom fixtures, um, as well as installation of a main gas line. And then um, kind of going back to our miscellaneous line item, again, this, uh, this could be for a multitude of things. It could be for sport equipment, office furniture. Uh, we, uh, this renovation does get approved. We would like to put a security system and or cameras around this building. So our community development fund currently sits at $986,753 as of April 1st. So our current uh, trend forecast that 439 new homes uh, will be constructed during our current fiscal year 23-24, uh, of which 250 have already been issued a permit. So that leaves 188 yet to be permitted. So if you multiply that by our new uh, community development fees of $1,375, that gives you $258,500. Uh, of uh, community development fees that have yet to be collected during this current fiscal year. So with all that being said, uh, we are also forecasted uh, to permit 548 homes in the next fiscal year, fiscal year 24-25. So again, if you run those numbers against the 1375, that gives us $753,500 of projected community development fees uh, to be collected in the next fiscal year. This is a city initiated request for a, a sign waiver for a temporary banner at the Central Central District, as you just indicated. Uh, specifically, it is for the farmer's market. Uh, this, the proposal is for the uh, vinyl banner sign to be hung on the face of the Eastern Pavilion stage. Uh, Currently, this, the sign code requires uh, that temporary banners be permitted only for uh, three uh, two-week periods per year with a maximum sign area of 35 square feet. Uh, this particular um, the vinyl banner sign has been designed to uh, be proportional with the face of the stage, and so it does exceed the 35 square feet. Uh, it specifically is three feet by 30 feet, uh, so it's 90 feet uh, square feet of the area, and we are requesting this from um, April to September, so for about a six month period. Now we're gonna be presenting life saving awards to both civilians and five EMS personnel. Uh, February 4th, 2024 at 11, 10 a.m., Van Alstine Fire Rescue was toned out for a cardiac arrest at 300 Williams Way, Sanford Elementary School. At 11, 14 a.m., Engine 1 and Medic 1 arrived on scene. Approximately one minute later, the crew made patient contact. At this point, the crew discovered that the pastor of the church, Mr. Randall Owens, was in cardiac arrest. Several bystanders had already gathered to render aid to Mr. Owens. This included Arturo Lopez, Justin McNair, Trey Madol, Eileen Grimes, Daniel Henson, and Josh Cantrell. Arturo Lopez began CPR and requested someone to find an AED. 
Josh Cantrell and Daniel Henson went and located an AD and brought it back. Justin McNair, Trey Madol, and Eileen Grimes all assisted in the CPR efforts as well. Those efforts that these individuals provided for Mr. Owens were monumental in his survival. We'd be honored, honestly, to have Mr. Owens come forward and be able to hand the awards to these recipients as we call out your name. As we call out your name, if you would, just please come forward. Eileen Grimes. <laughs> Daniel Henson. <laughs> Trey Madol. <laughs> Justin McNair. <laughs> and the other two were Josh Cantrell and Arturo Lopez. I was told they were not here tonight. Now we're going to recognize the fire and EMS crews, Nick Donahue, <laughs> Jacob Curtis, <laughs> Joshua Rides, <laughs> Tim Helpenstell, <laughs> Captain Cody Hendricks. <laughs> this is why we do this. Uh, we're just so glad that Mr. Owens is still here with us, and uh, at this time we just uh, like to give him the opportunity to say a few words. First of all, thank you guys so much. My wife said he's working up here. We work with you guys and the others that help. She'd be with her. And I'm uh, here because of your efforts and because of what you were trained to do and put in place. The Bible tells us that um, a man devises his way, but his steps are ordered by the Lord. There's no question in my steps were ordered to be at that place at that time for this to happen because any other time before that or after that, it would have been too late or at the wrong place and I wouldn't be here today. And so I, I think it's important to say uh, uh, something really quickly. Uh, the Bible says that uh, uh, we're to set the Lord apart in our hearts and always be ready to give a defense of the hope that lies within us. Uh, this is not our first brush with death. A long time ago when I was in my early 20s, I was working at a 7-Eleven store, and uh, a guy came in and they, they didn't know what this out if somebody tries to rob the store what to do. Uh, and I'd been robbed before, and it wasn't that scary. But this guy, was he was either on drugs or didn't know what to do, but he was shaking, he had a gun, pulled out a gun, he said, give me all the money. So I packed up the money and gave it to him. And as I gave him the money, he stood there like this, shaking with a gun in my face. And it's like he didn't know whether to shoot or not. I said, man, you've got all the money. Please just leave. He stood there for a few more seconds. And then he took, took the money, turned around and walked out. And I was shaking. I wasn't a believer at the time. And I didn't know what would happen if I died. That was my first brush with death. This is very different. Uh, this was a brush with death that I don't even remember most of it because uh, uh, they, were, they were there. I was out and all of that. But you know, in reflection on it, uh, it's very important that I, I was not afraid this time. I didn't wonder what would happen to me when I died. Because after that other event, I had, I had gotten under the instruction of God's Word and understood that Christ died for my sins, that I might have eternal life, and I put my trust in Him. And so from that time forth, I never, I never thought, what would happen to me when I die? I know what would happen to me when I die because Jesus Christ took my place and he says, truly, truly, he believes in me has eternal life. So this brush with death is very different uh, than, than the first one. And knowing for sure what would happen to me was made all the difference. And so God has given me uh, a little more time for some reason. So you pray for me that I'll know exactly what it is that God wants, what he's left me here for. But I just want to thank all of you because my second chance here and, and being some time on this earth because of you guys and what you do. And we are so extremely grateful. We have received and notified that there was uh, an application made for a concrete batch plant off of US 75. It's not in the city at this time. It's in the city's ETJ. But it's on the west side of 75, just south of Farmington, uh, over by the buying plant. There is a public hearing, thanks to Alex for working with TCEQ and Representative Reggie Smith to get a public hearing scheduled for that. It is Thursday, May 2nd at 7 p.m. at the Kid Key Auditorium up in Sherman. So uh, 
This is the Gonzalez Brothers Batch Plant proposal, uh, our application with TCEQ. So you have the opportunity as citizens to make your feelings known or just to get educated on, on what a batch plant is. It's a concrete uh, batch plant as opposed to the cement plant. I don't want to confuse those two. There's a proposal for a cement plant in Dorchester you may have read about. This is a separate issue. It's a, uh, much closer to home for us, but it is a pro just a proposal for a permit at this time, so nothing that is uh, set in stone. Oh, and there's an election coming up, May 4th. So uh, we heard earlier from, uh, from the uh, Grayson College folks so that they have a bond on the election, and we have a city council election too, so I will encourage y'all to get out and vote on May 4th. I think that's it.